ah, I got a thumbs up from someone. It's working. Awesome. So where are we from? Where's everyone from? Austin, Texas. Oh, man, that's really cool. I have never been to Austin. I've been to Houston for a work conference before, but I heard Austin is supposed to be a little more fun. Thank you for joining, Carol. Okay. Well, it's 10.02, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in because time is of the essence. So thank you all for joining. My name is Michelle Williams. I am a educator, author, professor, fashion lover, self-publishing consultant, and many, many other things. Um, I am really excited to have the opportunity to be a part of this platform. I am actually celebrating my one year anniversary on Medium August 17th. So this is like really great timing um, just for me and my writing journey. I began writing as a child. Um, I always used to write myself like uh, conversations. I have, you know, back in the day, those old notebooks, the black and white notebooks, I would literally fill them up with all these conversations that I would have with myself, um, just like processing things or I had a bad day at school, I'm just writing everything out. Some things are happening at home, I'm writing things out. So writing has always been a part of me. Um, as you know, we get older, go into college, start a career, I stopped writing for a very long time. And I recently picked it back up again because of life. And we're gonna talk about that and what that journey looked like for me. So you guys are here today to learn how to live a soft girl life or soft person life in a work with, with work-life balance because let's face it, life, life is hard and everyone in, deserves a little softness in their life. So I um, wrote this blog back in November of 2022, I believe, and it was my most popular blog. Um, I will drop it actually for you guys in a little bit so you can take a look if you've never seen it before. And basically, I was outlining several things that I did to just promote wellness in my life. So before I go into what those things are, I want to tell you where I got to that place. And then I want to end our session today with you guys creating your own just pledge and identifying some things that can help you live a soft life too. Okay, so my post soft girl life. Whew, my post soft girl life looked like working 14 to 15 hour days as first year teacher in Philadelphia. I taught autistic support, life skills, emotional support, um, some learning, learning support as well, if you're familiar with those disabilities. And I basically just worked myself like a dog. Like I was obsessed with being the best teacher. I would go in on Saturdays and spend all day. I would be making sure my lesson plans were great, making sure that activities were done, making sure that just like everything about my students' educational experience was impactful, which is obviously a great thing to do as an educator, but I was doing it at the expense of like sleep, right? So then fast forward a couple years into my teaching journey, my total teaching journey is 15 years in January will be my 15th year. Um, my father got ill and I had to basically pick up my whole life and move back home to take care of him. So then I was teaching in Philadelphia and driving maybe four hours, four to five hours out of the day round trip um, because my work was in Philadelphia, my home was in the Lehigh Valley area and morning traffic and afternoon traffic. So I spent a lot of time just driving and my I just completely exhausted myself for all those years. But I did it because I loved it. I didn't wanna leave my students, but I still wanted to be a caretaker for my parent. And so I was just doing all of the things. Fast forward a little more, my mother um, came back into my life and she came back into my life also very ill. So that was just another compounding factor to me just now one thing with taking care of my father, but he didn't need that much care. He just needed someone there to help, but then becoming a full-time caretaker for my mom who had greater needs. Again, I'm driving back and forth and now being a caretaker to two people 
And essentially my, I was literally running my body into the actual ground. Um, I was, I lost tons of weight, not a good thing if you're not trying to lose weight. I, my hair started like not growing well. My nails were brittle. Like I wasn't eating properly because by the time I would get home, I'd be too tired to eat. Right. And so I just wasn't great. You would think that would be enough for me to like put pause on my life and like get it together. It wasn't. So I eventually um, got a job near where my parents live. That was the one thing that I did. Um, And so after working there for a few years, and I thought that I was gonna try to get myself back together, life happened. I experienced a sexual assault and it basically shut down my entire life. I call it like the great pause of my life because the world essentially stopped. And as awful of an experience that was, I needed the world to stop because I was not well. I was not taking care of myself. I was trying to take care of everyone around me, students, having a student live with me for three months because they weren't safe at home. I mean, I was just like doing all the things and it needed. I needed that stop in my life. Now, do I wish it was that circumstance? Absolutely not. But that great pause in my life really humbled me and made me realize that like it, my life as, as I was living it being that workaholic it was not sustainable right like it, it's not sustainable to work 13 14 hour days and expect to be a functioning healthy person so because my life stopped and I immediately went into therapy I started learning things about myself and my nature of like why did I work myself so obsessively right like why did I feel like I had to come to the aid of like so many people in the way that I was showing up but then recognizing I wasn't doing that for myself so after some pretty tough you know therapy sessions um my therapist asked me you know Michelle who would you be if you weren't a caretaker if you weren't an educator And I couldn't answer the question. Like I legit, like, I don't know. Cause I had lost so much of myself in just trying to work, 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 work. And it was, it just, it wasn't sustainable. And I was realizing that. So the very first thing that I began to do, these are like the steps that I did to really start implementing that work-life balance is one, I let my body be still just full stop. If I woke up and it was a weekend and I was just tired on a Saturday where I usually would wake up early and try to like work, I let my body be still. Like I didn't push myself to do more than what my body was telling me it couldn't. If I got off of work and I might think in my head, okay, I want to do just one more lesson plan or I want to do one more thing. And my body was telling me I couldn't, I didn't. I just full stop, let my body be as still as possible when applicable. And then another thing I did was actually make my time a commodity, meaning I prioritized my time with my friends. I would put them on my calendar. I would prioritize time to pour into myself, get that massage, get those nails done, just be like, go to the sauna, but I would put it on my calendar and make it an appointment just like I would for anything else to hold myself accountable to, to taking care of myself. Another thing I did was just really implement strong boundaries with people. Like saying no became my favorite word. Like, no, I'm sorry. I don't have the capacity to do that. And then not feeling bad or guilty about it because At the end of the day, I can't function and be well for anyone in my life unless I am functioning and well. And also just stop releasing the idea of like, I owe people my time. I don't always owe people my time. My time is a gift, it's a commodity, it has a value. And I should should own that value of my own time as well. Um, Another thing I did was daily meditation. 
I just meditated before we got on here because I was so anxious. And so I just really have implemented 10 minute meditations throughout my day in the morning um, when I'm feeling like really anxious about something and it's really, really been helpful. And alongside of that meditation was just fitness. Fitness for mental health is my favorite little slogan because I don't personally have like fitness goals, like lifting or anything like that, but just getting that heart rate up and just like moving your body releases so many endorphins and healthy things in our body. And it feels great. So like entering, um, excuse me. So fitness for mental health, that meditation, those boundaries, and then last setting up realistic expectations for my work-life balance. I am currently a school leader and in leadership, it's a 12 month position. It's a nonstop, it never ends. There's no breaks like summer break. And so the work, because it never stops, it's easy to always keep working. So really implementing work boundaries, like after four o'clock, I'm done, I'm checked out. Like, a, like, I don't communicate with parents. I don't communicate with my staff. I really try to make four o'clock the hard stop. And then because I know that my work is demanding, I do give myself the one day a week to work really late. Wednesdays are my work late days, but that's, that's manageable for me and realistic for me because the work never stops and it needs to get done. But also the work is always going to be there. There's, it's never going to stop. But for me, it's realistic to have at least one day a week that I know is my work late day. And then the rest of the days and the weekend, I do not work on weekends. So if I can help it, don't work on weekends. That's like a balance that works for me. So I want you all to identify what would be a realistic work-life balance for you because the more you can identify a schedule, the better it is to uphold that boundary when you try to implement it. So, um, so naming, so the last thing is just like giving myself that grace. So giving myself the grace to know that I don't have to be Wonder Woman. I don't have to save the world. I don't have to save everyone around me and know that it's okay. That doesn't mean that I'm not a good person or that I'm not good enough right? Just giving yourself that grace and permission to be still. Giving yourself that grace and permission to just go to the gym and work out. Giving yourself that grace and permission to just get get a massage and not just, oh, once every month. Make it a cons every two weeks if that's in your budget, like whatever it is in your budget and that you have um, that can be your time, whether it's going to a park and going for a walk twice a week, make it a thing that is part of your daily experience, living experience. So I want to shift now to doing like a little bit of an activity because I want to engage and talk with you guys. So I want you and I you didn't know to be prepared for this, but if you have like paper or pencil or maybe just your phone, whatever, um, I want you to take three minutes to just identify three, no, three to, no, five. Let's just push it to five. Five things that absolutely bring you joy that you haven't done in a while. What are five things that bring you joy? Take three minutes to jot those things down. So if you would love, I would love for you guys to share. And, but this doesn't seem... It's not like we can chat on here, but if you put it in the form of, hmm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to open the Q&A and let's see if that will allow us to communicate with one another. Oh, I'm looking at our group of people here. Grace, do I consider my work on writing work? No, 
my work on write, my, my medium writing is like my, one of my five things that I love to do. And I wish I had, I wish I did it more. Um, so that is, I don't consider my work uh, writing on medium work. No, that's like a love, a passion project of mine. Um, Anna, thank you for joining from Germany. That is amazing. Uh, and I will share, I will share my, um, my username on Medium. Hello, Janelle from Rochester. Okay, I want you guys to share with me your five things. If you guys wanna pop them in, because I would love to read what some of your five things are that you absolutely love. Let's see if we can get this going. Or can you guys come off mute? Are you guys able to talk to me? Because I would love that. Don't be scary. I'm not scary. Okay, I'm gonna ask a question and see if you guys can respond. Let's see if you guys respond to this question. I have to review and approve my own question. That's silly. Okay. So if you guys can hit reply and share with me some of your five things that absolutely bring you joy, I would love to know. So three people have identified their five things. That's good. All right, now we got some replies. Let's see. Writing, being with family, nap. who doesn't love a good nap? Traveling, watching films. I love that. Someone else. There's a part two to this little activity that we're doing, friends. Okay, well, it seems as if six of you, six or seven of you have your five things. What I would love for you guys to do next is to take out your phone and I want you to schedule those five things in your phone. It may be silly, like, being with family, I want you to schedule a moment like this week where you're blocking out time to be intentional about spending time with your friends or family rather. I want you to schedule your naps. I want you to schedule your naps. And I also want you to schedule when you are going to do some writing, even if it's for five to 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be for a long time. Because what this does when you put things in your calendar, it makes them a little bit real. For me, it does. If I say that I'm going to show up and participate and do some event, go to some event to support a friend, if unless it's in my calendar, it's like 50-50. But if I put it in there on my calendar, because my calendar rules my life, then I know I'm going to show up and I know I'm going to do it. I put when I'm going to go to the gym on my calendar in yellow, because it's bright. I look at it and I see, okay, these are the time this week where I'm gonna get to the gym. It helps me stay accountable. It also builds in that balance of like that release that I need because work is so stressful. So I want you guys to schedule your five things in your calendar, whether it's your Google Calendar, Outlook, wherever. I want you to put at least three but max the goal is five of those things that you identified in your actual um, calendars. 
And then I will, I would love to hear some of the things that you guys have shared. I mean, that you've written down. And also I'd love to hear from you guys what keeps, what's the biggest barrier to having that work-life balance that you can think of for your life. And I'd love to talk through that with the last 10 minutes that we have. I see some of my friends here. Hey friends. <laughs> Juhi, I would love to hear one of your one of one or two of your uh, favorite things that you're gonna schedule. I'm sorry I'm not familiar with this platform, you guys. Is anyone able to come off mute to like speak? I think I assumed that that could be a thing. Or you can write to me in the ask a question box and I'll see it pop up for you to like share either what your five things are or what barriers you have to actually doing those things. Okay, friends, well, I'm sorry that we aren't able to like engage back and forth a bit more, um, but hey. There's Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear us or can you hear me? I can hear you, can you hear me? It seems like your audio is trying to join, but I'm not entirely sure. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, Hi. sorry. This took like so long to figure out how to connect and send Dang. questions. So you asked me what were some of my things that I'm going to schedule time for. I put writing time and also time to take myself out on dates. Love that. Love that for sure. What's one of the biggest barriers to creating that time that you found? Um, I think... Um, having the discipline to do these things when my motivation runs out. Mm. Motivation is a hard one because it's like an invisible barrier that like has so much power. It's not like, oh, my car ran out of gas, so I can't get to the gym. So that is a hard one. What do you think, how could people in your care circle help hold you accountable for when like you're feeling less motivated? I have a thing where I like don't tell people about what I'm doing until like afterwards. Um, I think it's just like a cultural thing with the way I grew up. And I also, I feel like it just protects me from being called out. But this summer I'm learning, I just need to tell people what I'm doing because it helps them too. And also like sometimes I do need them to like gently call me in and yeah. check up on me. And it helps a lot. I love that, the calling in thing. Because it's all about just like making sure we're all well-rounded and taking care of ourselves. Because if not, we're all just work to death because capitalism. <laughs> we feel like we need to constantly be moving. Um, Grace, I'd love to hear from you. What are some, th thank you, Juhi, also. Thank you so much. Hi. Um, I don't know, I was, <laughs> I was having trouble with this Q&A and then my thing got booted and it reset. Um, I wrote down walking my cat. I'm taking a hike around the, the new park that's around here. 
Nice. I don't know. I feel like I just don't make time for it, I guess, is it? <laughs> and so it's how do we, so in order to make the time, we have to make the time, right? Do you think yeah. scheduling those things in would hold you a bit more accountable? I actually did add it to my calendar for tomorrow. I have, I'm like setting up my morning to go to the park. So, <laughs> so it's just, you know, by the time I remember it's late and then it's too dark to walk ninja or anything like that. So. <laughs> well, I, I have every, every confidence that you will get even more, get better at scheduling and making the time, but you're mm -hmm. right. I think something that distracts us a lot of the times is just like our fatigue actually. Yeah. Right. I, like have, I have chronic pain and all of that. So mm -hmm. it makes things a bit more difficult. And I have actually like tried to be more active with self care. I've actually started recently going to acupuncture, doing the regular massage and like, um, I get facials, which I probably don't need, but it's like relaxing. It's just that like being able to just kind of lay down and everyone needs a facial. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, this is essential to life. <laughs> That's really good though. I'm really glad that you are doing little things, right? To like get yourself out of the house even. I know it's probably difficult with your your chronic, you know, uh, condition, but even if it's just those little things, it makes all the world in the difference. I also find you guys that just like silence, like sometimes like I will spend my whole Saturdays like not watching TV, not listening to music, not being distracted by like Netflix. Just are you still watching? Yep, I am because I'm just sitting <laughs> in front of a TV. Something about sitting in silence is like very calming. I think that's like also why I kind of like the facials and acupuncture. Like I did the acupuncture and she walked out of the room after doing the needles and I, I passed out hard, like probably more than I am. <laughs> I love, I've never done acupuncture, but I've always wanted to, but yeah. You should try it. I, sh I guess I should. Like I've got some neck things going on. So yeah. I should like when I met with her, like I just met with her for my first time um, last week and she was like, it was like a holistic, like, practitioner probably like listened to me more than my doctor did and like we went through my full body head to toe and like oh everything she's like incredible. do you want to have kids eventually because we could work on your fertility like just all these random things i'm like oh i didn't know this is something i punctured in <laughs> i didn't know that was a thing either thank you for sharing that with yeah. us thank you so much for engaging with me grace and i thank everyone for being here i'm sorry for like not being super familiar with how all the platform works, but I hope you got something out of this experience today. I'm going to drop the link for, oh, you guys asked, someone asked where you can find me. So on, sorry guys, that's my timer, <laughs> the teacher in me. Um, Michelle Noor is where you can find my Medium uh, platform and that's M-I-S-H-E-L Noor, N-O-O-R. Um, I will drop that here so you guys can find it. And I would love for you guys to stop by my blog. Like, let me know you're there. Like something. Leave a comment. Engage with me. I love engaging with people. It's, like, fun for me. I get my energy from interacting with people. So I really do hope that you got a little something out of today's session. And I hope you enjoy today's medium day and listen to other speakers. I'll be on again at 11 to talk about how to write some pretty nuanced stories um, when they're not the most popular of opinion because truth to power. So honoring your truth is the next session. Hope to see you again at 11. Thank you.